Greetings, motherfuckers, or should I say, hey, bub. My name is Sam, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of the most famous comic book characters of all time. No, not that one, or that one, or that one, even that one. No, Snicked, it's Wolverine. Yes, we've talked about X-Men in another video, but we felt that old Wolvie needed his own. Trust me, you'll see why. But how did Wolverine get his superhero start? How many Marvel teams has he been in? And just how do I grow a beard and, you know, general body like Logan? Put in the time, put in the time. Although I mean in the films, really, because in the comics he's just a short little lad, and he smells apparently. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so sharpen your claws, don your super suit, and get ready to be hyper-violent in a PG-13 way as we go through 101 facts about Wolverine. Number one. Right, let's get down to business. The Wolverine is the largest land-dwelling species of the family Mastillidae. Despite that though, they're still quite small and tend to live alone. And they are reportedly quite vicious little creatures. Number two. Oh, that's embarrassing. Sorry, that's the entry for the wrong video I'm making about Wolverines on the side. We're talking about the character Wolverine. He's a mutant, possibly the world's most famous one, whose powers include his all-powerful healing factor, which is essentially making him immortal, and those three claws out of each of his hands. <laughs> we'll talk about them a bit more later. Number three. He's mostly associated with Marvel's X-Men superhero troop, being a mutant and all that. He was first recruited to the X-Men in 1975, and has since appeared in at least 13 different Marvel teams, including the New Avengers, Savage Avengers, and the Super Canadian Alpha Flight. Number 4. But Wolverine actually first appeared in The Incredible Hulk. Uh, oh god, that's a horrible image, I'm so sorry about that. His first appearance was against Hulk in 1974 in the issue number 180, although he properly fights him in 181, because basically every single Marvel and non-Marvel character has to fight Hulk at some point. Sounds getting real low. Hulk wins this fight though, kind of. Number five. He was the first and the greatest Canadian superhero. Why is he Canadian? Well, first off, why not? But also, the folks at Marvel wanted to capitalise on the fact that comics were really taking off in the Great Red North. Editor-in-chief at the time, Roy Thomas, approached Len Wayne about including a Canadian hero in an issue of The Incredible Hulk, and there were two possible names for that hero. The Wolverine, or the Badger. badger, badger. Number six. In fact, in his first full appearance, the comic book cover proclaimed, He's here, the world's first and greatest Canadian superhero. Take that, Deadpool. <laughs> no wonder Ryan Reynolds hates him. Number seven. So how much did Len Wayne make from Wolverine? $350 for the issues where he first appeared, and that was until the movie The Wolverine was released. This was due to the fact that Marvel automatically owns all the rights to any character that appears in their comics. It was due to these contract issues that many of Marvel's biggest names left the company in the early 90s and formed Image Comics. Number 8. The original Wolverine was drawn for publication by Herb Trimp. And you may notice that he has a much, much smaller mask, which, yes, he has a mask, unlike all the movies he appears in, will tell you. The mask didn't appear until Giant Size X-Men number 1. Number 9. The Wolverine mask we all know and love was created by accident when it was redrawn by Jill Kane for his first full appearance. Originally, he had whiskers on his mask and shorter cat-like ears to make him more like an actual Wolverine. Cute, sure, but nowhere near as badass. Wow. Number 10. He almost had a very different face too. John Byrne sketched a face for Wolverine and then realised Dave Cockrum had already revealed his face in an earlier issue. Whoa. Burns' sketch then went on to become Sabretooth in the future. Number 11. Wolverine was almost hashtag cancelled. I know, it's genuinely actually quite shocking. But originally, Colossus and Nightcrawler were at the forefront of the X-Men. Wolvie just wasn't as highly regarded. And then John Byrne swooped in and saved his fellow Kanak. Number 12. In the original Wolverine comics, there was a rule that Wolverine couldn't have arm hair when he was in costume, but he could when he was in casual clothes. Gradually, artists managed to sneak the arm hair until he was a very hairy boy all the time. Number 13. Now, Wolverine used to be a very heavy smoker, often featured on covers smoking cigars and cigarettes. However, after Marvel's editor-in-chief imposed a company-wide ban on smoking back in 2001, Wolvie kicked the habit and in reprints of old comic books, he would have the cigars edited out. Number 14. 
So yes, he was a heavy smoker and indeed a heavy drinker, but this wasn't really a problem for him. Due to his healing factor, he isn't worried by the long-term health effects of tobacco or alcohol. Any damage done to him is just instantly repaired. Number 15. Wolverine's catchphrase, apart from the word bub that is, I'm the best there is at what I do, but what I do best isn't very nice. This was coined in a 1982 miniseries entitled Wolverine. The series was the first created for Wolvie by Chris Claremont and Frank Miller. You know him, the guy that made Sin City, and then later The Spirit. Number 16. Now then, Wolvie's real name is James Logan Howlett. Bet you knew that middle bit, but not the first, huh? He was born in Canada in the 1880s to some rich farm owners, the Howlets. Get it? How? Because wolf Arreen? Number 17. So by the time the first X-Men movie comes around in 2003, Wolverine's already 123 years old. His aging is tremendously delayed by his awesome super healing ability, which we'll come back to in a bit. Number 18. Turns out, though, he's actually the son of their groundskeeper, Thomas. Whoa-oh. He's not very happy about this and comes back into the farm, killing John Howlett. Young James then kills his true father with bones that pop out of his hands. Number 19. He fled with his childhood companion, Rose. <laughs> Who is he? The Doctor. And adopts the name Logan, which just so happens to be the surname of his birth father, Thomas Logan. Oh, I get it. Number 20. Sadly, he kills Rose by accident with his claws. Oh, isn't puberty hard? He then flees the colony and lives in the wilderness among wolves until he's captured and placed in a circus. Wow, no wonder he's so grumpy. Number 21. Both Wolfman has had many love interests following his childhood beau Rose, the main one being Mariko Yoshida, whom Logan first met in Japan. Wolverine's been in relationships with Jean Grey, Mystique, Red Sonja, and Storm. Number 22. Ooh. He was also romantically involved with Mary Jane. In Ultimate Spider-Man number 66, Peter Parker wakes up inside of Wolverine's body, not like that, with Logan's mind now within Spider-Man's body. They have to live out a day in each other's lives while trying to work out what caused the switch in the first place. Number 23. The mind switch was the plan of Jean Grey. She was sick of Wolverine hitting on her, so she decided to put his mind where he least wanted it to be. Which is really harsh on Spider-Man, really, and a bit accidentally creepy because MJ's in school, but there we are. Moving on. Number 24. You could say that Wolverine seemingly has a thing for redheads, having been romantically attached to Jean, Mystique, Rose, and MJ, kinda. I get it, Wolfie, I get it. Plus, who wouldn't fall in love with Jennifer Lawrence? And there's a name I haven't said in a while. Anyway. Number 25. Interestingly though, in an alternate universe, the Extreme Universe as it's known, Wolverine is bisexual and is in a relationship with Hercules. Yep, the guy who put Glad in Gladiators. <laughs> number 26. There are even rumours and rumblings from X-Men number 7 of this year that Wolverine may be in a throuple relationship with both Cyclops, who he doesn't get on very well with, and Jean Grey, who he gets on very well with. Now there's a thought, huh? Number 27. Wolverine also had a son called Dakin, who has inherited his father's mutant abilities. Dakin was brainwashed, having his personality erased artificially, making him a living weapon. While Dakin acknowledges that Wolverine is his father, he blames him for the death of his mother, Istu. Number 28. We then find out in Wolverine Origins number 25 that Bucky Barnes, yep, of wintry soldiery fame, was responsible for Istu's murder, and then he shoots Dakin in the back of the head with the carbonadium round that Wolverine gave him. Christ. Number 29. For those of you who aren't sure what carbonadium is, it's a radioactive metal developed by the USSR in Marvel lore, and this radioactiveness slows down any accelerated healing factors possessed by those such as Wolverine or Dakin. Number 30. At some point, Dakin also becomes Dark Wolverine, joining the Dark Avengers that were led by Dark Norman Osborn. Okay, he doesn't have Dark in front of his name. Dakin is also the only one of that team that manages to evade arrest and successfully flee. Papa Wolf would be proud. Number 31. Did you know that originally Sabretooth was supposed to be Wolverine's father? His creators, Chris Claremont and John Byrne, confirmed that there was going to be a plotline with this reveal, and after Sabretooth kills Wolverine's girlfriend Mariko, Wolvie goes insane and is able to kill his daddy. Big oof. Number 32. The plotline was ultimately scrapped because it literally didn't make any sense. Wolverine's father and indeed entire family had already been revealed in Wolverine the Origin issue number one. We told you a few facts ago, remember? Number 33. 
Sabretooth used to torture his brother Saul every year on his birthday until Wolverine killed Saul. So now Sabretooth tortures Wolverine on his birthday every year instead, even going so far as to kill Silver Fox, who Wolvie was in love with at the time. Number 34. Wolverine also has a kind of daughter. I mean, she's technically a clone, but eh. Laura Kinney, also known as X-23, was created using the only genetic sample from Weapon X, from which her kind of mum was able to salvage the Y chromosome, so they created a female clone instead. Number 35. X-23 was trained from childhood to be a living weapon. She was subjugated to radiation in order to activate her mutant gene that was used to force Laura to kill anything mercilessly. Number 36. When she's older, she seeks out Wolverine and engages him in a battle that she wins. But before she's able to kill him in order to wipe out any chance of more mutant weapons being created, Captain America pops along and arrests her for all the shady stuff she'd done before. It's a long story, but then all comics are long stories, really. Number 37. X-23 then takes up the mantle of the Wolverine after Logan's passing. She also founded the Wolverines, which includes her, Dakin, Sabretooth, Lady Deathstrike, Mystique, and Elixir. Yeah, a couple of them were evil, and then less evil later. It's complicated. Number 38. Back to Logan Wolvie, though, he's incredibly multilingual, mostly due to his living all over the planet at various points over his long, long life. He's fluent in English, Mandarin, Japanese, Arabic, Russian, and Spanish. He also knows some French, German, Thai, Vietnamese, Farsi, and Portuguese. Is that a superpower? It should be. Number 39. Wolverine's claws split his skin every single time they burst through his knuckles. But luckily, his super healing factor means he doesn't die of blood loss every time. It also hurts every time they extend, so they only tend to appear just before a battle or when someone, you know, really deserves it. Number 40. He can also choose to only extend chosen individual claws and at chosen lengths, which is pretty handy. Kind of like a Swiss army fist. They can measure up to a foot long and require his wrist to be straight in order to unsheath them fully. Number 41. Wolverine is pretty indestructible as heroes go, but the writers took it to another level in Uncanny X-Men when a drop of Logan's blood lands on the crystal of ultimate vision. You got red on you. After the alien villain Horde ripped Wolvie's heart out. He then regenerated from this blood crystal and became even more powerful, thus killing Horde who, let's face it, really did play himself there. The meaning of life. Wolverine's healing power means he is resistant to most poisons and drugs, including alcohol. It's nearly impossible for him to get drunk, so he will drink you under the table. Give it a damn good go, though. Number 43. He doesn't like water, as being drowned is one of the very few ways he can actually be killed. Also, him having 100 pounds of adamantium in his skeleton makes him significantly less buoyant than the average person. Number 44. That being said, he can seem to hold his breath for an exceptionally long time, because his healing powers lessen the strain put on his lungs. He will eventually die from oxygen starvation though, and it will be extra drawn out and painful because of his ridiculous healing properties. Number 45. Wolverine has a lot of memory issues, in part due to these healing capabilities. This means he's forgotten large chunks of his life and a lot of traumatic events, which honestly, yes, can cause problems, but after the amount of things this dude's been through, it might be a good thing. Number 46. One of Wolverine's strengths, though, is heightened senses, which for the most part he uses to his advantage in tracking. However, this can work against him. He can experience sensory overload in some cases, such as when fighting the Hulk, and his thunderclap nearly killed him. Number 47. These heightened senses also allow him to identify people by scent, meaning Mystique's disguises are essentially useless against him, and he can also tell when people are lying by listening to their heartbeat, like a living lie detector. Wow, Daredevil, he's basically got your entire thing, and he can see. Number 48. We've gone on about how invincible Wolverine supposedly is, but in 2014, Marvel Comics released a storyline, The Death of Wolverine. He loses his healing powers to a virus, not that one, don't worry, and ends up suffocating in adamantium, the element his skeleton contains. Number 49. Back to how invincible he can be, though, he survived an atomic blast, getting run over by steamroller, and being ripped in half by the Hulk. Number 50. He's somewhat immune to brainwashing after being brainwashed by Hydra twice. Professor X taught him how to put up mental barriers to avoid it happening again. 
Emma Frost, for example, has tried and failed multiple times. Number 51. One of the other very few things that can kill our hairy friend is the Muramasa Blade. It took many years to prepare, however its creator, also called Muramasa, told Wolverine that it would kill anyone, including him, and to wield it like an angry god. Number 52. In 1993, Marvel sent out their annual financial report to Marvel shareholders, and this year it came in the form of a comic book. Clever. However, in one of Wolvie's stranger moments, he endorses Gerber baby products. I'm not an expert on babies, but a guy with big sharp claws probably isn't the best person to endorse baby products. Number 53. We've established he's pretty darn old, but over his lengthy time on Earth 616, he's also become a weapons expert after being a samurai, mercenary, tinker, tailor, soldier, spy, although without the tinker and tailor, at various points in his life. Number 54. He's mastered almost every form of hand-to-hand -hand combat on Earth. Over his long life, he's taught many heroes how to physically fight, including Black Widow, Rogue, Storm, Nightcrawler, Colossus, and others. Number 55. He's also become quite the computer nerd over the years, managing to beat your mama at keeping up to date with technology. Oh, and he's a qualified pilot. I'm honestly not sure if there's anything he can't do. Number 56. Wolverine fought alongside the Star-Spangled Man with a plan in World War II. That's right, Wolverine and Captain America teamed up to rescue a young kidnapped girl from the hand. Who's that girl? It's not Jess, it's Natasha Romanov, the future Black Widow. And now it's a crossover party. Number 57. Speaking of Cap, during the 2012 comic book series Avengers vs. X-Men, Wolverine actually went against his mutant pals and sided with the first Avenger and co. I mean, in the end, they all work together for the greater good. The greater good. But still, that's gonna leave a mark. Number 58. A group called the Red Right Hand sent Wolverine to Hull. Sorry, I misread that. Hell. As revenge, he aimed to kill them, but had to get through their team, the Mongols, first. Once he'd murdered them all, he found out that the Red Right Hand all took their own lives, and the Mongols he just killed were all his own offspring. Number 59. In an alternate reality storyline, Wolverine accidentally murders all of his fellow X-Men. Whoopsie! Mysterio creates an illusion that they're all villains and Wolvie kills them all before realizing he's actually slaughtered all his friends and loved ones. He then vows to never use his claws again. Number 60. In 2001, a new X-Men spin-off comic was released called Exiles, which focused on a group of superheroes that had been displaced from time and space. In issue number 85 of this, a whole bunch of Wolverines were brought together to make the ultimate Wolvie team. Sorry, Wolverhampton. Number 61. The team only lasted for two issues, being overwhelmed by an army of Wolverine clones as a way of making fun of Wolverine's overexposure in Marvel Comics. And some would argue the movies, considering he wasn't even in the original X-Men lineup. Number 62. He's also had an alter ego called Patch, so called because he wore an eye patch. That's it, that's why he was called that. He stayed undercover as Patch in a solo series to keep the resurrection of himself and other believed dead X-Men a secret. I don't know about you, but that's the best disguise that I've ever seen. Number 63. In the Amalgam universe, Wolverine was mixed with Batman to create the character Dark Claw. His enemy was a fusion of Sabretooth and the Joker called the Hyena. Dark Claw's real name was Logan Wayne, and his sidekick was the Sparrow, who is a mix of Jubilee and Robin. Nintendo 64. Dark Claw's backstory was a mixture of both characters. He witnessed his parents being killed by Mugger as a child, standard, and then was later drafted into the Weapon X program. See what they did there? They literally just smashed the two together. Number 65. Wolverine may well be strong, but he's no match for Mr. Spock. One of the most infamous moments in the Star Trek X-Men crossover comic, which by the way does exist, involves a fight between Wolverine and Spock, and all of the berserker rage in the world didn't help Wolverine as he quickly jobbed out to a single Vulcan nerve pinch. Even his healing factor didn't protect him from a patented Spock ass kicking. Number six, six, six. What? In another one of Wolverine's crazy deaths, the Punisher blows him up and all the other X-Men in a nuclear explosion on the moon. Yep, yeah, really. To really make sure he was dead, Punisher stabbed him in the throat and chest with his own claws and then threw him onto an electrical generator, which melted him to just a skeleton. I mean, that'll do it, yeah. Number 67. 
He's also killed by Deadpool in the series Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe, so, you know, everyone is killed by Deadpool. DP stabs Wolvie with a carbonadium sword and tells him that no matter how many times he kills him, he always comes back because his real superpower is popularity. Now that's meta, baby. Number 68. Now, of course, most people know Wolverine as played by Hugh Jackman, but he wasn't the first choice to play Logan. That went to Do Grey Scott, who then had to drop out because he was filming Mission Impossible 2 and was then injured in a motorbike accident and wouldn't have recovered in time. Number 69. It's nicked. Glenn Danzig of the band Misfits was apparently also approached, but he turned it down because he was scheduled on a world tour. He likes to air his dissatisfaction at Jackman's casting, seemingly at every opportunity too. Number 70. Russell Crowe was also eyed for the role before personally recommending the Hugh we all adore. No, not Hugh Grant. Have you been paying attention? No, Hugh Jackman, who credits Crowe with catapulting his career into superstardom. Number 71. In the comics, Wolverine stands 5 foot 3 inches. However, Jackman stands at almost a whole foot taller at 6 foot 2. This is something that some diehard fans have complained about over the years, and has meant Jackman's co-stars often have to stand on boxes or wear platform shoes to make him look shorter. Number 72. He used to undergo intense physical training every time he played Wolvie. When in peak physical condition, he could bench press well over 300 pounds. Number 73. Somewhat unbelievably, Jackman hadn't been happy with his physical appearance as Wolverine and even got advice from Dwayne The Rock Johnson on how to achieve his super physique. Number 74. For shirtless scenes as Wolverine, Hugh Jackman wanted to look as ripped and cut as possible, so he took on a dehydration diet, which meant not consuming any liquid for 36 hours before shooting in order to tighten the muscles. We do not recommend this, and to be fair, neither does he, because he would often feel headachy and faint, but damn, it worked. Number 75. In the first X-Men movie, Jackman took a cold shower every morning at 5am to help get into character. He also didn't have any hot water in his house, so it wasn't really to, you know, get into character as much as just that being his house. Anyway, number 76. He then decided this was a good reflection of how Wolverine felt all the time, and used it as his character prep for every day he filmed Wolverine scenes throughout the X-Men and Wolverine movies. Now that is dedication. Number 77. Jackman also had no idea that a Wolverine was a real animal when he took on the role, and thought it just meant wolf. It wasn't until X-Men director Brian Singer told him to go to the zoo that he did some research and realised his mistake. Number 78. Wolvie was supposed to have a cameo in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man back in 2002. In an interview with Huffington Post in 2013, Jackman explained the cameo didn't happen because they lost his suit. Number 79. Apparently it would have been just a gag cameo, not like a wider cinematic universe kind of thing. But guys, they lost the super suit. But they didn't have time to make a new one in time for the Spidey shoot. <sighs> what could have been? Number 80. Hugh Jackman accepted the Wolverine cameo in X-Men First Class after he was told he would be the only character to use the F word in the movie. Number 81. He even improvised the eventual line after seven takes of an alternative scripted line, so James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender's reactions of shock are actually authentic in the scene because they didn't expect that to happen. Number 82. When Wolverine jumps from the Statue of Liberty in X-Men, Hugh Jackman got his testicle stuck in the harness when he performed the stunt. Uh... <sighs> Number 83. In the first X-Men movie alone, over 700 individual claw blades were made by Wolverine. These were made of either plastic, rubber, or steel, depending on what the shoot required, and whether Jackman or one of his four stunt doubles was wearing them. Number 84. It's not unusual for actors to undergo combat training for movies these days, but Jackman also had to train with a hand-to-hand -hand combat specialist, not only how to fight, but how to handle those enormous claws at the end of his hands. Number 85. When being interviewed by Jay Leno about X-Men 2, Jackman told a story that during the Weapon X flashback where he runs through a corridor naked, when he turned the corner, the female cast members and James Marsden's mother were waiting for him and waving dollar bills. Work it, bub. Number 86. In the same movie, Jackman's sister visited the sets and was made up in the full costume and makeup to prank people. Even director Brian Singer couldn't tell that it wasn't Hugh. Number 87. Wolverine's berserker rage when the school is raided in X-Men 2 had to be toned down to meet censor approval. 
We didn't really see his full-blown Berserker rage until Logan, which was R-rated. Number 88. One of the biggest critics of X-Men Origins, apart from, you know, everyone that's seen it, is Hugh Jackman himself. He's admitted that everyone involved with the film could have done better and that they had essentially tried to make a fourth X-Men film without any of the recognisable characters. Number 89. Luckily, his next solo outing in the franchise was The Wolverine, which critics were mainly ambivalent towards. Luckily, the extremely positive reviews for Logan meant that he ended his tenure as Wolverine on a high note, so that's something at least, eh? Number 90. In X-Men Days of Future Past, the script originally had Logan waking up in 1973 wearing boxer shorts. Now, Jackman argued against this and said, In Australia, if you're next to a really good-looking girl, you're not getting out with boxer shorts on or briefs or anything. Wise man, that dude, Jackman. Number 91. In that same scene, the woman he's in bed with calls him Jimmy. As we found out earlier in the video and from the comic books, Wolverine's birth name is James Howlett, and so Jimmy comes from that. Number 92. Patrick Stewart's also in Logan, and he lost 21 pounds for the role, something he found challenging after maintaining a steady weight since he was a teenager. It's worth noting too that Hugh Jackman genuinely carried the sick-looking Charles Xavier in every scene. I mean, physically, not, you know, acting-wise. Number 93. Logan was Hugh Jackman's last ever outing as Wolverine. He stated in an interview that the only way he'd reprise the role is if there was a crossover between Deadpool and Wolverine. Come on, lads, sort something out. Number 94. There have been plans for five other Wolverines that have all been cancelled. These include a young Wolverine in the 70s with Tom Hardy playing Wolvie and James Cameron trying to direct one in the very early 90s before favouring and failing to make a Spider-Man movie. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Number 95. Steve Blum has played Wolverine in at least 20 different projects, ranging from video games, theme park attractions, and various animated series. He's even been nominated for the BTVA Awards due to his excellent portrayal of Logan. That Wolverine can get it. Number 96. In case you recognise that name, by the way, Blum has been the voice of many great characters in anime like Spike Spiegel in Cowboy Bebop, Orochimaru from Naruto, and Mugen. Number 97. In the iconic 90s X-Men TV series, which honestly gives me all the nostalgia, Wolverine is voiced by Cal Dodd. Cal's also voiced Wolverine in a number of Marvel products, but more prominently in X-Men titles. Number 98. In 1993, a Swedish band named Entombed released an album called Wolverine Blues, which featured a track of the same name. The album has nothing to do with the character of Wolverine, and nor does the Wolverine Blues song. They just like the name. Number 99. However, Entomb's record label cut a deal with Marvel behind their backs. A new version of Wolverine Blues was released, which was marketed to a more mainstream audience. Wolverine was on the cover, and it came with a small comic. The songs on the album were also very heavily censored. Number 100, bub. There's obviously a gap for a new Wolverine now that the X-Men are eventually coming into the MCU, but who should play him? Well, according to the internet, Danny DeVito. A Change.org petition to have Danny DeVito portray Wolverine has over 50,000 signatures and states he should play him as he's close to Wolverine's canonical height. Then again, Julianne Moore is the same canonical height as Logan, so maybe her. Anyway, number 101. If you feel like this hasn't been enough Wolverine for you, then you'll be thrilled to know there's a Wolverine audio drama, which is a scripted podcast from Marvel New Media and Stitcher. It was dubbed one of the best podcasts of 2018 by Apple, and has had a comic adaptation made of it due to its success. Oh, and Richard Armitage voices Wolverine. What more could you ask for? So that was 101 Facts About Wolverine. Is he your favourite mutant? Who do you think should play the new Wolverine? Let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to give this video a like, and subscribe to 101 Facts if you haven't done so already, to join the Mother Factor crew, baby! In the meantime, though, two videos on screen you're really gonna dig. Gosh, you're just gonna, you're just gonna love them, honestly. Why not give them a click and I'll see you there. Night night.